Hello, I'm Terry McCann with the last in my five-part series titled An Introduction to Lean Concepts. After introducing lean in part two and then the concepts of waste and hijunka, we now look at the question, what is Kaizen? If you don't know where you're going, you'll probably end up somewhere else. This Irish saying made famous by a few different people, but most notably Yogi Berra, the famous and recently deceased baseball player, and Lawrence J. Peter, who wrote The Peter Principle, perfectly illustrates why Toyota developed what came to be known as their True North concept. Before beginning any improvement, you have to take some time to paint a picture of how you would like this process to be one day in a perfect world. For a start, you would not want any defects or any other waste, such as non-value-added steps. This vision represents what should be in the ideal, not what can actually be done. So do not try to be pragmatic. This is a vision that is meant to give direction. When you walk northwards, every step you take takes you closer to the North Pole. Very few people ever arrive at the North Pole. You will never arrive at your ideal vision, but every Kaizen improvement will take you closer to it. Many lean practitioners and masters would presume on the implementation of 5S as the first prerequisite for tackling Muda and inculcating a lean culture and environment. Simply put, 5S is a discipline of workplace organization designed to eliminate muda based on five Japanese words beginning with the S sound. We very briefly look at each one. Sort. Using what's called the three R's, work on a particular location or area and divide everything into what needs to be retained, whether for regular or occasional use, or returned to another department, supplier, or customer, then get rid of everything else. Straighten. Make a place for everything and then keep everything in its place when it is not actually in use. Create color codes and label everything. Mark aisles, work areas, hazardous zones, and safe areas. Scrub. Clean everything. Consider a fresh coat of paint. Keeping your person and work area clean is everyone's job, not just the janitor. Systematize. Establish a system and schedule to maintain everything sorted, straightened and scrubbed. Standardize. Establish roles and responsibilities and provide training to ensure that everyone sorts, straightens and scrubs the same way. That the same things are put in the same place regardless of who uses them. Some people like to add a sixth S for safety. Others teach that safety will follow if you are diligent about the first five S's. Either way, safety should be enhanced never compromised by lean. In its simplest, Kaizen is a Japanese term which signifies a habit and culture of continuous improvement that specifically increases the effectiveness of an activity to produce more value with less waste. Kaizen is normally incremental and continuous, although management may decide to have a Kaizen workshop, also called a Kaizen event, Blitz or Kaikaku, typically setting aside three to five days to plan and implement a major change where some kind of breakthrough is required that needs to be more than just an incremental change. A good way to approach Kaizen is to analyze the current state value stream map, looking for waste wherever it can be found in any of its forms but especially type 2 muda, non-value added and unnecessary. Are there bottlenecks causing idle time elsewhere? Ask what can be done to take those particular steps closer to your business's true north. Mark up the current state VSM with Kaizenburst symbols 
that describe the candidate improvements at that point in the value stream. Some questions to explore in addition to dealing with Type 2 MUDA. Can we reduce inventory by producing smaller batches? Can our customers take smaller delivery quantities more often, just before they need them? Can suppliers deliver reliably just in time for our processes? Which is the bottleneck process with the longest cycle time? Is work and material being pushed through the process regardless of whether the next step is ready to receive it? If work and material are being pushed through the process regardless of whether the next step is ready to receive it, can we convert to a pull process using Kanban? Kanban is any form of signal that triggers replenishment, thus pulling the work or material only when ready or needed. Your car's fuel gauge is a form of Kanban signaling the need to refill the fuel tank. One of the simplest examples of process Kanban is a board divided into three and labeled to do, in progress, done. Post-it notes describing necessary tasks are moved across the board depending on whether the task is waiting, in progress or completed. A factory can use this supermarket principle. As soon as a bin or shelf is empty or below a reorder point, a signal or message, such as a pre-printed Kanban card or the bin itself, is sent to an internal store which immediately replaces or replenishes the bin with the desired amount of material as specified on the Kanban card, and then places a corresponding order on the supplier who has an identical Kanban card and is ready to deliver the smaller quantity with very little notice or lead time. This was a key element in Toyota's implementation of just-in-time processing. Takt is the German word for a regular beat or pulse associated with a clock, much like English tick-tock. Used in lean, takt time refers to an ideal pace of production where a unit of work is produced every so many seconds or minutes depending on how many units are required by the customer and the time available before the customer needs the work. Tact time equals available time divided by units of customer demand. The idea is that we apply Hijanka or process smoothing to bring the cycle time of our various process steps as close as possible to tact time. The greater the difference between cycle time and tact time, the more muda we have. Hopefully our current state VSM will be littered with Kaizen sunburst symbols. When we feel we have exercised reasonable diligence in identifying MUDA and candidate opportunities for Kaizen, the next step is to identify one particular area for Kaizen, preferably the one that will give us the most bang for our buck. Then draw a future state value stream map showing what the processes will look like when we implement the improvements for that Kaizen area. Leave all the Kaizen sunbursts in place to show where the changes are. Show the new inventory or supermarket levels and the new cycle times and lead time in the process data boxes. How do we actually implement the Kaizen changes? We use a methodology called Plan, Do, Check, Act, PDCA, sometimes commonly called Plan, Do, Study, Act, PDSA. Practitioners of Lean use PDCA or PDSA as a methodology to implement Kaizen improvements. But PDCA is not peculiar to Lean and predates Lean and the Toyota production system by a number of years. For this reason, I will simply use PDCA without further explanation. Plan phase. In the plan phase, you identify the processes to be improved and ensure that the problem to be addressed is clearly described. Are you just tackling the symptoms 
or the real cause. With that in mind, what are the expected outcomes or results that will enable us to evaluate the degree of success or failure at the end of a limited pilot implementation? Decisions must be based on measurable and verifiable data. Draw up a what, when, who project plan appropriate to the scale of the change. Identify the steps that need to be taken to effect the change both for the pilot prototype and the production implementation and identify the resources needed. Consider doing a process failure mode and effects analysis, P for MIA, early on in the plan phase, asking what could go wrong and what could happen if it went wrong. What is the risk and what should we do to reduce the risk and or mitigate the impact? Top most of the risks to consider are risks that could adversely impact any of our customers during or after our changes. Protecting our customers is the top priority. Avoid surprises by including in your project plan how and when to communicate with or involve management, customers and other stakeholders in the organization at key points throughout the project. When you have done planning, then do it. In the do phase, you do the trial in a prototype or pilot setting that is small enough to be quick and well controlled, but large enough to be representative and produce valid data for evaluation against the expected outcomes. In the check phase, you analyze the results of your trials in the do phase. If the analysis shows that expected outcomes were met and the trial is a success, then we move on to the next phase, the ACT phase. However, if the degree of success is below the predetermined threshold or new problems are discovered or created, then it's back to the drawing board. We go back to reanalyze the problem and start again at the plan phase. This is not uncommon and is precisely why we have the check phase. The only real failure would be a failure to check or a failure to learn. In the ACT phase, you update and distribute all affected documentation such as new VSM, standard operating procedures and work instructions. Provide training in the new process even for staff who were involved in the pilot so as to ensure uniform understanding of what is required and to avoid first and second class citizens. Start production using the new process. Measure and monitor the new process to ensure permanence of the improvement. Report the results to all stakeholders. So in summary, we looked at needing a true north vision to give direction and purpose to our improvement efforts. We looked at 5S as a prerequisite for tackling MUDA and inculcating a lean culture and environment. Then we looked at Kaizen and how to identify opportunities for Kaizen and Hijunka by examining the current state VSM and creating a future state VSM. Finally, we looked at using the PDCA or PDSA methodology for actually implementing our Kaizen improvements. I'm Terry McCann. If you would like to take the next steps in implementing Lean in your organization, whether that be manufacturing, selling, or a non-profit service organization, and would like to talk about your next steps, send an email to terry.mccann at tcmc-qms.ca. I would love to hear from you. You might also like to look at my website or blog. Just go to tcmc-qms.ca or simply do a Google search on TCMC Terry McCann and find the links.